Good Monday morning. I don't know if you remember last week, but last week God identified himself to Hagar, the young mistress, servant girl of Sarai, who created this child Ishmael with Abram. The Lord revealed himself to her as El Roy, R-O-I, the God who sees. And this week in chapter 17, he's going to reveal himself to Abram in a way Abram's not known him before. It said, when the Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. He's telling him again, fourth time. Then Abram fell on his face. Makes me curious if the events that we just read about in chapter 16, when he had kind of allowed a mess to be made, Uh, that he was a little desperate, more desperate for God, because that's kind of how we get in our messes, don't we? We get a little more desperate. He fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations." I love this passage of scripture. And what I love about this passage is twofold. Number one, it comes right after the mess of what we just talked about last week. This mess that he and Sarai and uh, Hagar have made of this situation. Of trying to help God out, if you will. And here God comes to him and he said, Abram, I need you to know who I am. I am not the God of this situation that you've just created. I am the God Almighty. That is God El Shaddai. One translation, one descriptor of that is I'm the God of more than enough. Not just enough, but I'm the God of more than enough. And if you will trust me, if you will walk before me and be blameless, you are going to be able to see the fruition of what I've promised you. But it's not going to be found in the mess. It's not going to be found, Abram, in doing it your own way and walking according to your own will and getting all stirred up in Sarah's hornet's nest and, and her fear and her frustration and not calling and listening to me. And so then something very beautiful happens. God says, I'm changing your name. That man of chapter 16 is not the man of chapter 17. I'm making you a new man. Your name is Abraham, the father of many nations. The fourth time I am committing my covenant to you, but this time I am changing your name. I've thought so many times through the years as I've read this, how many times we change our names. I think of the story of Ruth when her mother-in-law, Naomi, goes back to her homeland and her all her family and friends are like, oh, it's Naomi. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. It's not Naomi. My name's Mara. I am bitter. God has made me bitter. She changed her own name. How many times have we allowed the circumstances of our story to change our name? Abram's heard God's promise multiple times. He's waited for years for the fulfillment of that promise. And it would be very easy in that disappointment to change his name to bitter, to discouragement, to not enough, to uh, full. You, you name it. We can try to change our names to all different kinds of things. But God said, oh no, my promise that I made with you in the very beginning when I asked you to leave your father's house is still the same promise. So much so that I'm going to change your name. I'm going to call you into your destiny. You are able. Abraham, the father of many nations. How dare we change who God has called us to be by renaming ourselves? We are his. We are his children, the sheep of his flock, the apple of his eye. We are the head and we are not the tail. We are above and we are not beneath. That is who we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, heirs to the promise. That is who we are. We cannot let our circumstances change our name because our God is El Shaddai, the God of more than 